YouTube. This week I am going to start a new series of tutorials focusing on Google Analytics. Um, this tutorial is going to focus on the Google Analytics interface, just basically getting around navigating and, and what you will find on the Google Analytics interface. Um, starting with uh, just standard reporting. I'm not going to go into the customization because um, that requires uh, quite a, a, a that requires a tutorial all of its own. Um, when you first log in the first time um, into Google Analytics, um, once you've set everything up, uh, it always by default takes you to the audience overview unless you have a dashboard set up, um, which would be over here under dashboards, uh, and you can have the dashboard be your opening screen instead. But generally the default is going to be your audience overview. It gives you um, the last 30 days um, trended of your traffic. Um, and also gives you some uh, insights into your visits, your unique visitors, your page views, your pages per visit, um, average visit duration, um, your bounce rate, your percent of new visits uh, within this period, and then also um, a bar, bar chart. <laughs> and also a pie chart showing you your new and returning visitor percentages. If you scroll down uh, a bit further onto this screen, uh, you also get, um, there's some uh, demographic information, um, country, territory, city, um, links, um, and then links into your browser information, mobile information, etc. that you can click to um, for additional information. And then also a table with some information on language. Uh, what are the primary languages of people who are visiting uh, your website? Um, with, for me, um, English US being uh, the most popular, which is um, not surprising. All right, um, so that's the basic overview of this particular report. Now, um, all reports have ways of manipulating them um, through things like here, you can select a metric and I could take a look at um, bounce rate so you can see how bounce rate compares to visits on this particular graph, that kind of thing. I can change um, the graph from day, daily to weekly, monthly, even in the last 30 days, it's a bit silly to kind of look at it that way, or even hourly, which is <laughs> um, a little bit frenetic there, uh, but a default to day. Um, and, uh, you know, so basically when you are um, working with Google Analytics and you're looking at a report, uh, keep in mind that there are things that you can click on in each of the reports that you can um, then add um, further insight by changing um, the graphs and the data that you're looking at. All right, going over to the navigation, um, you have things here basically broken out by two groupings. There's my stuff, uh, which is um, a lot of customized things that you put together, um, dashboard shortcuts, intelligence events. Each one of these I will do a separate tutorial on. Um, and then you have all of your standard reports. I'm not going to go into great detail today, but I will kind of go through um, these a little bit. So the first group of standard reports is um, the real-time reports. Um, so you've got an overview, locations, traffic sources, content, events, and conversions. And these are all showing uh, data real-time. And I will just do a quick overview. I will look at the overview reports for each of these, and that's it. Now, my site does not get a ton of traffic. Um, this is going to be a very valuable report for people uh, with websites with um, fairly decent amount of traffic. Um, I, as you could see from my previous screen, I did not get a lot of traffic, so you're not going to see a lot of active traffic on this. And right now, there are no um, active visitors to my site at the moment, which is perfectly fine. I, I don't strive to get a ton of traffic on my site, and that's okay. Um, and the overview gives you an overview of the page views, the referrals, the social traffic, keywords, and locations, and top active pages. Um, currently being viewed. Um, and then you can drill down further by looking at the uh, at the breakdown reports under here. Um, then the next group of reports is audience. Obviously we already looked at the audience overview. Um, beyond that um, they have demographics and interests. These two are basically populated if you actually have demographic information that um, you are collecting from your users, that they have to sign up and register and provide you that information. This is not information that um, you are going to get um, by default from just your general user population. Um, they actually have to self-select um, that demographic information because um, Google 
does not know just by looking at someone's browser history what age they are. Um, they, they have to self-select um, to give you that information and then you can populate it into these reports. And then you have geography, um, you have behavior such as new versus returning frequency and engagement data, um, technology, looking at browser and OS and what network they're coming from, uh, mobile uh, type of devices, that kind of thing. Um, and then there's some custom reports, custom variables, user-defined reports and things that can be set up there. And then there's a visitor flow uh, report as well. And as you can see here, it basically shows how your visitors are flowing through your website. Um, here, um, it defaults by country territory and then what starting pages um, they started off on and then um, the second page they went to, the second, uh, third page they went to, etc. Um, and so basically how they flow through the site. And then this uh, report you can actually manipulate if you um, click on, um, if you left click on any of these, you can actually like highlight traffic through here. So you can actually, it, it it bolds the colors for those and, and mutes the colors for the other ones so that you can actually kind of focus um, the flow for that. Or let's say I wanted to, let's say clear the highlighting there and um, some, depending on how, how deep you get. So these are groups, so you get group details, but on the individual ones we can go ahead and we can highlight um, traffic through those as well. So it kind of gives you a chance to kind of focus because it gets a little bit busy with all the flows and things to kind of focus on how things are flowing through specific pages and such. All right, so beyond real time and audience, uh, next we have acquisition. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of show the acquisition um, overview screen. And here it kind of gives, this is a this is actually a brand new report. They didn't have an overview before, but they kind of break it down by organic search, direct social referral data, just kind of looking at like where are, what groups of referring types of traffic are driving the most to your site um, through the overview. Um, and then of course you have other breakdowns. You can look at marketing channels, you can look at all traffic, all referrals, um, campaign traffic, keyword traffic. Um, there's a new cost analysis report that can be looked at. You can tie your AdWords campaigns into your Google Analytics and get additional insights that way. Uh, you can look at your social and you can also tie in your web, Google Webmaster tools and get some search engine optimization data as well. All right, moving right along, going into behavior, looking at the behavior overview. Um, this gives us, you know, some additional data. It gives us, again, page views, unique page views, etc. cetera. Uh, but also down here, it breaks things down in terms of, like, site content, so, like, top pages. What are the top pages that uh, visit your website? Defaults to URL, but you can actually look at it by page title as well. Um, site speed, um, looking at how quickly um, the page and your site loads, um, how, etc., um, so that you can kind of see the overall site performance, um, the speed performance, and see whether or not perhaps um, a particular page or part of your site is loading slowly and perhaps that could explain why people leave the site at that, at that stage or whatever. I mean, it's definitely um, very valuable information to see how quickly um, parts of your site are loading. Um, site search, so basically internal search to your website, um, assuming that you have an internal search um, and what keywords are people searching on once they get to your website. Um, custom events. Um, these are basically your uh, dynamic interactions on the website, um, the on clicks on buttons, um, interactions with videos, and th that type of thing will be collected under events. Uh, you can tie um, AdSense if you are running any AdSense ads on your website and collecting revenue from AdSense. You can actually um, get some additional insights by tying that into your Google Analytics as well. Um, you can run experiments, um, A-B testing, multivariate testing, etc. And then also in-page analytics where you can actually kind of see the kind of hot spots where people click uh, on links within, your web, uh, within a particular page of a website. And again, I, I will go into these in much more detail in future um, tutorials. Um, and then finally uh, is conversions. And here we have uh, where all of your gold reports are going to be. 
um, as including your goal flow. So if you have a goal flow set up, which I don't at the moment, I need to set up my goals. Um, if you have an e-commerce site, all of your e-commerce uh, reports are going to be found under here. Um, Multi-channel funnels, if you um, have any kind of um, marketing channel uh, tracking that you're doing, you're going to find um, that kind of thing in here. Um, and then attribution. Um, if you are interested in like first touch, last touch attribution, and any kind of kind of marketing attribution uh, modeling and that kind of thing, um, that's going to be found there. So that's the um, overall thing of where you're going to find everything within uh, the navigation. As you can see here, you can expand and collapse these um, at will um, to see all of the reports underneath them. And uh, I will just go ahead and just do one Let's see, I'm going to do site content all pages. Um, just to kind of show a couple of things within a report navigation, um, I already showed how you can uh, go ahead and look at um, comparing um, data, um, comparing metrics into this graph. Uh, what else you can do is you can see over here um, at the top, right now uh, we've got line chart. I can change it to bubble chart. If I click on that. Um, and it shows this bubble chart over here. Uh, but then, if I if I don't find that useful, I could change it to a um, bar chart, which at the moment doesn't really have a lot of data. <laughs> um, or I could do it as a uh, as a line chart, which that actually um, shows us a little bit more information. And I can see that I've got uh, an interesting spike going on over here, which I didn't see um, from the standard. Um, I could see the spike, but I, I couldn't see like the specifics of what was driving the spike. But coming back over here um, and going back into the line graph, you can see specifically the home page was driving that spike right there. And then secondly was the services page. Um, and then the third, uh, the third one driving that was the about page. So you can see that that's where the, the spike was happening. So you can kind of really drill down into the data. Uh, you can look at the, at the specific uh, numbers as well, but sometimes having the visual really helps it pop, um, in my opinion. All right, so that's uh, looking at, uh, at this chart up here. But then further down here, um, the data is by default always displayed in a table format. And you can see there's other um, options for display. You can look at the data in a pie chart. So looking at the, the top pages um, broken out by a pie chart. Uh, and the gray area is basically other. So um, these are all of the visible pages here, the top 10 pages. And then this big chunk here is all the other pages other than that lumped together in terms of traffic. Then we've got a bar chart. So you can kind of look at it and uh, look at this data visually. Um, then we have what's called a comparison chart, which it really doesn't have uh, much of a comparison right now. Um, and then we finally have a pivot chart. So for those of you who find pivot charts uh, useful, um, it gives you this in a, in a, ta in a table format, excuse me, gives you in a table format the pivot information um, for, this, uh, for this data. Um, and then, of course, you can pivot here, um, and you have a bunch of breakdowns here. You have a bunch of pivot metrics here that you can choose from, select, etc. So there's all sorts of different ways to interact with these reports. Um, oh yeah, as I was mentioning earlier, let me just kind of go back to the standard look here. Um, so here it defaults uh, top pages by URL, uh, and if you click on page title, it actually will give you the title, uh, the page title instead of the URL. So you can look at it this way. The danger of this report, of the page title report, is um, if you do not use a unique page title for every single page of your site. If you have a section of pages and they all have the exact same page title, then the traffic data to that will all get lumped together into a single group. So you have to make sure that every single individual page of your website has exactly the same, un uh, has, has its own unique page name. Um, with absolutely no uh, no exceptions to that, uh, it's it's very critical that that's that that happens, um, and that's you know that's 
you know, the, the, the one caveat for the page title. And you wouldn't, you know, I know a lot of people think it's intuitive to, yeah, you want to have a unique page title for all your pages, but you, you would be surprised how many of my clients I come across who don't, who have, someone got lazy and didn't update the page titles in a particular section of, of content, and all of a sudden all the data gets lumped together. Um, and they like using this particular report, especially when they're uh, delivering to the executives, because it's more intuitive. Um, if you use this one, um, it's less intuitive. Executives may or may not know which page it is based on the URLs. I mean, my URLs are pretty um, intuitive, but they, they aren't to everyone. Um, and so then you'd have to manually go in and write what the page title should be for that page for the executive. So it's, it end up, ends up making more work. Um, but anyway, that's just one little caveat I want to point out there. Um, but I'm not going to go too much further into um, these types of things. I just wanted to use this particular report as an example of um, the fact that all the different reports have a lot of different ways to navigate and change the data and look at the data and slice and dice it in a way so that you can kind of get further insights into things. And over the coming weeks, I will go into a little bit more detail um, on a lot of these different types of reports, um, the insights you can get from them, that kind of thing. So I hope that folks will find this useful. And on, uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, um, please leave a question in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them or address it with another tutorial. Um, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would greatly appreciate you subscribing. That way you'll get keep up to date with my weekly tutorials. And um, if you find these useful at all, please like and share these videos. Um, that would really greatly help the channel as well. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.